Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 24th, 2022 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording again from Jacksonville, Florida, with the remainder of a late evening thunderstorm in the background. Xavier today took a look at who is accessing the security.txt file. Uh, This file has been around for a couple of years, but it became sort of more official in April when RFC 9116 was finalized uh, to promote it. The idea of the file is to communicate security contact information for a website. Uh, You may list email addresses, PGP keys or uh, bug bounties that your site is participating in. Of course, bug bounty hunters are one of the primary audiences for this type of file. Xavier did see a good number of hits uh, to his security.txt file and somewhat expected with the increasing popularity of this file, the number of hits has been increasing uh, this year. But another motivation may be spam bots harvesting email addresses. So far, most of the hits appear to be automated, uh, not too much spam to that address, according to Xavier. Of course, it's also possible that bug bounty hunters are deploying scripts to collect sites with worthwhile bug bounties. I often talk about malicious Python packages and recently I stated that I'll actually not mention them as much anymore because, well, pretty much every day, at least once a week, we have sort of a new news article where someone found some new malicious uh, packages. One question that often comes up is, well, is there some automatic way to detect them and Sure, uh, some of the reports that I'm referring to, they come from commercial providers of source code scanning tools. But two researchers, uh, John Speed Myers and Zachariah Newman, took a look at the PyPy malware checks to see how effective they are in detecting malicious packages. Now, to get started with this, of course, they first needed sort of a test data set. And uh, what they did there is uh, they used sort of a mix of the most popular and uh, recently updated packages to build a data set of about a 2,000, I think they got, uh, non-malicious or benign uh, packages and then they used uh, two distinct collections for their malicious sample there is something called the backstabbers knife collection that had about a hundred malicious packages and they got another 75 from the mal oss that's the malware open source software data set while the checks worked okay to find malicious packages not perfect but well that wasn't necessarily expected The real problem here was that they had a pretty bad rate of false positives, which uh, renders the entire approach somewhat useless if uh, you then have to double check manually and such uh, these uh, packages. So really not suitable for a large scale automated approach, which of course is what a PyPy kind of uh, needs. For more details, see their blog post. As usual, of course, the URL will be in the show notes for that. And then we have an interesting blog from Google's Threat Analysis Group, or TAC. They wrote up a tool that they call a Hyperscrape. Hyperscrape is used by an Iranian threat actor, and it's used to connect to victims' webmail account. Now, the research comes from Google, but they state not just Gmail, also Yahoo Mail and uh, Outlook 365 are affected here. The tool itself does not necessarily exploit a vulnerability in these webmail systems unless you sort of consider that a protection against automated scraping should be a security issue. The tool uses either stolen session cookies or a username and password to authenticate. It can actually even prompt the attacker for the username and password. And then it basically just does web scraping. So it does not enable POP or IMAP access, which sometimes is disabled also by organizational administrators. So the user wouldn't be able to 
enable it. Also, if they open an unread email to scrape the content, they'll later mark it as unread again. So the user is not alerted by all of a sudden having all of their emails marked as read. The blog post also mentions that an earlier version of the tool was able to use Google Takeout. Google Takeout is a feature that you see a lot in websites these days, part also for GPR compliance, where uh, with a few mouse clicks, you're able to download all of the data that the particular uh, organization has about you. So with Google Takeout, you could basically just get a copy of all of the uh, emails and more Not sure why they removed this particular feature, but maybe the downloads were too large or uh, took too long because it takes a while uh, for uh, these archives uh, to sort of be uh, compiled. And in noteworthy patches today, we do have an updated version of Firefox, Firefox 104, that fixes a few vulnerabilities, nothing critical here, a couple high ones. And IBM released a patch for MQ, the message queue tool. It fixes an XML external entity vulnerability. These vulnerabilities are kind of interesting. A lot of people have talked about it a few years ago when sort of web services came out big. I think they have gotten a little bit out of uh, the new cycle, but certainly are still an issue. People always think, hey, XML, these days we use JSON, still tons of XML with that, tons of XML external entity vulnerabilities out there. In this case, the vulnerability would allow arbitrary read access uh, to MQ. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.